for you today is that you shake up the world. You shake it up with the Word of God right from where you are. Whether it's from a driver's seat, a post-race interview, a school bus, a traveling ball team, your peer group, no matter where you are, no matter how old or young, no matter where you're from or where you're going, we ask that you shake it up for God today. for joining us today. It's always our pleasure that you have chosen to share this time with us. We pray you are blessed by the message today. And if there's anything that you like about it, please give us a like, give a thumbs up, leave a comment. And also we ask that you share this with other people so they can be blessed as well. That's how you can join in ministry with God's Seed Ministry. We exist to connect people to God and each other, and we invite you to become a God feeder too and share the message. So let's jump right in now, and to God be the glory.
There's a testimony of a teenager, and this is from Ken Trivet, and I'm just going to read it aloud. It said, two mothers of teenage daughters were talking, and one mother said, my daughter doesn't tell me anything, and I'm a nervous wreck. The second mother said, huh, my daughter tells me everything, and I'm a nervous wreck. So when you're a parent, whether you're 8, 18, or 80, um, as a child, I said, whether your child's 8, 18, or 80, we never stop worrying, we never stop thinking and loving you. Uh, but think about that. One tells you nothing, one tells you all, and you're still worried. One mother said she was worried about her teenage daughter and son's failing eyesight. First, she said her daughter couldn't find anything to wear in a closet full of clothes and she was seriously concerned to take her to the optometrist. And the second was her teenage son could not find anything to eat in a refrigerator cupboard full of food. And so I think those two reside in our household. Uh, but then again, when you go to the grocery, 45 minutes later, there's a stack of boxes and empty wrappers and nothing left for the next six days to carry you. So uh, pray for those of you that have teenagers today. But as we all know, there are many problems failing teenagers, and it has very little to do with failing sight. So let's grab a few facts, and these are some recent statistics that we pulled off of the census. So an adolescent is defined by the United Nations as being between the ages of 10 and 19. Currently today in the world, there are 1.2 billion people falling between the ages of 10 and 19 making up 16% of the world's population. But in the U.S., there's approximately 41.8 million children ages 10 to 19. That's a lot of youth coming forward, a lot of opportunity for education, training, and change. So I want to speak with you if you're in that demographic, because we know there's a lot of us here today that are. But no matter what, you're called to be that good man. This is based on a sermon from Daniel, from Zimbabwe, and he references John 1, 45-46. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see so as we know in the Bible, Nazareth was looked down upon. There's a reason that Daniel was taken by surprise that Jesus, the Messiah, could have come from him. Nazareth was regarded as a desert where nothing rose, where nothing good came from, where nothing positive could come out of. There's a perspective. For those of you that are from the western part of the state or anybody that's a music fan, do you remember the story of Kelly Pickett? Kelly Pickler was born in 1986, and at the age of 19, she tried out for a little show called American Idol. A year before that, she had won a beauty contest, so she started to gain some local notoriety. But what many people don't know is Kelly Pickler started singing at an early age as a child, a child that was abandoned by her parents that had very limited family interaction from her maternal mother and father, that was raised by her grandparents. But one of her school teachers was at my house on Thursday night, which was really interesting. So our friend from Benson, who we lived across the street from, found out when we moved to Emerald Isle two hours away that they have a place that they come and spend the summer. So she came to spend the summer and then rolled out. So Thursday was our first day getting together. Her grandma was with her. And her grandma and I were just talking, standing there on Thursday. And she, somehow we were talking about, I think, opportunities of change and, and how people can influence others. I think we were talking about last Sunday service. And she said, do you know the story of Kelly Pickler? And I said, no, ma'am, I just know that she's a singer. She said, well, I was a school teacher in the Alvin Mall school system. And I was a principal and then became an assistant superintendent. And I watched Kelly come up. And she was one of the sweetest children you ever meet and had one of the hardest stories that would rip your heart out that you've ever heard. She said, but what was really interesting about Kelly is she had a good grandma and granddad. But her immediate circle of people that God put around her protected that child and poured into her. 
So when we come here, we talk about how nice it is to have friends here. How nice it is to have your children become friends with other kids and race. That the influences upon them are strong and the family values are heralded here. Kelly Pickler needed that in a little town in western North Carolina to survive. She went on, signed to 19 recording and DNA records as a recording artist in 2016. God took someone from a place that was small and a circumstance that was what you would say not having the highest opportunity of success. And Kelly Pickler has gone on to be a vocal success. Now, I don't know where Kelly Pickler is today, where she is in her way to survive. She went on, signed to 19 recording and DNA records as a recording artist in 2016. God took someone from a place that was small and a circumstance that was what you would say not having the highest opportunity of success. And Kelly Pickler has gone on to be a vocal success. Now, I don't know where Kelly Pickler is today, where she is in her walk of faith, where she is in Christ, but I pray that she's taken those opportunities to reach others and pour back. So I'd like to encourage all of us to do here, whether we're young or old, uh, whether we're young or veteran, seasoned, is to shake it up. And by shaking it up, you can view your hometown, your school, your peer group, your family background in a similar light to Jesus or even Kelly Pickley. You might be from a locality that very little is expected of you. You ever heard a term from the wrong side of the tracks? There's a reality to that. In many urban environments, city environments, and municipalities across this great country, the tracks are often both visible and the invisible dividing line. So to tell you where I grew up and where my family came from, my dad is one of 11. And my granddad was one of those abandoned. So my grandfather and his brother, his parents, which would be my great-granddad, they came to the States. His mother died and his father got remarried. And when his father got remarried, she only wanted to keep the daughters and put the sons in an orphanage in the 20s. So my granddad and his brother were extremely close. They grew up, they didn't have anything. At 18, do you know what they do to you at an orphanage, usually in that time period? They just open the door and push you out on the street. So my granddad's brother, my uncle Dan, opened a small repair shop in a little town called Fairport, Ohio. So my granddad went that way too. And he got a job working and he met this beautiful young lady which ended up being my grandma. And they had 11 children. And the first house they ever bought was their only house. And I remember talking to my uncle on the, on the ride home from here last Sunday night. And my grandma would say, you know, as long as we can make our house payment, we can live without lights, we can live without water, we can live without a lot of things. They paid their house off after 30 years, and their house payment was $84 a month. The house, our house that we bought from my grandparents the state after they passed away, I literally could throw a baseball and hit the railroad tracks. Is how close our house is, or was, to the tracks. They overcame so many things. Out of those 11 children were 45 additional grandchildren. So I have 45 first cousins on that side alone. You should see us get together. It's a little bit rough to see. A majority of them now drag race because the one thing that my uncle loved was race cars and motors, but he could never afford to have any. And so we were talking about that, about just loving those children. It didn't matter what side of the tracks they were on, or literally in this case, if they were on top of the tracks. So many great things have come of that. So be that Kelly Pickler, be that John Zapp, be that overcomer, and shake it up. So if you're from a locality and might not be known for producing much of anything, 
I want you to surprise people. Like Jesus surprised Nathaniel by originating from Nazareth. I want you to surprise people for the glory of God. Not for your own edification, not for your own prowess, not for your own confidence. But go out today and surprise people for Jesus. It's amazing what can happen when you're focused on Him. And my prayer for you today is that you shake up the world. You shake it up with the Word of God, right from where you are. Whether it's from a driver's seat, a post-race interview, the school bus, the traveling ball team, your peer group, the go-kart track when you try to run your little brother off the track or bump him on. Any of those places, just shake it up for God. Why am I looking at the front row? I don't <laughs> just be an example of excellence in a place famed for mediocrity. We pray that you can be a role model no matter where you are, no matter how old or young, no matter where you're from or where you're going. We ask that you shake it up for God today. Father, we thank you for all we have. We thank you for the friends, the family, the racers, the facility, the freedom of the country that we have to compete. And we thank you for all the beauty, the bounty, and the blessings we have here at July. Today we want to lift up one of our own, Billy Gibson in Maryland, whose body is fighting viral meningitis, whose physicians need that divine touch, that ability, strength, confidence, and wisdom to help treat Lord, we pray for this your will that his body is healed to hold us and serves as a miracle to you. We pray for Jake Corker as he has to have surgery on his hands and his sticks. We pray for those that are out and about today. Those that we can reach for each and every one of us with a friendly smile and offer to help. Uh, even just winning or losing as a lady or gentleman. We may serve for Christ today as we talk, walk, and live for you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us Please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at GodspeedMinistry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately. Because we are preparing to become His bride when He returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in Messenger, and again at Godspeed Ministry. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with it, leave us a heart and let us know. We'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.